So uh, we said when we first defined limits that the limits that we first defined, which didn't have the plus or minus about um, SC plus or C minus, is two-sided. So what can we say if the limit from the right equals the limit from the left? What can we decide then? Then we can decide the limit as x goes to C without a plus or minus, f of x uh, exists. Uh, so that's right, exists here. And it's equal to both of those things, which are the same number, right? The caution is that if one of these limits is DNE and the other is DNE, we can't just say, oh, they're equal because they're both DNE. And we'll show an example of that later. Um, let's do a quick example here. Let's still say we're at five and we've got something like that. What would you say is the limit as x goes to c minus? What's the limit as x goes to c plus? Well, imagine coming in for, for this minus one, coming in from the minus infinity side, uh, coming in from the left, going to the right. Uh, you would your y values would be decreasing and getting closer and closer to eight, so that limit would be eight. For c plus, um, you would be coming. Sorry, this is c. Um, uh, from coming in from the plus side, our y values would be decreasing, getting closer and closer to eight. So that would also be 8. So then we'd say the limit as x goes to c without a plus or minus is equal to 8. Now what if we modify the drawing slightly? So we'll still have a 5 there. This will be at 8. Um, but then I've got a dot at 9 there, a closed dot. Uh, now what can we say? It's the same story as before. The value at that x value itself, the y value at that x value, doesn't change anything that's going on with limits. The whole point of limits is to be able to ignore what's going on right at that value and talk about the behavior as you come close to it, um, but not care what it, what's going on right there. So all this stuff is the same as above. since the big point of limits is to ignore f of c itself. All right, let's look at some other examples real quick. Um, what if I had 1 over x squared? That looks like this. So what would you say there as the limit as x goes to 0 minus the limit as x goes to 0 plus? Well, from the minus side, this function is increasing and getting bigger and bigger. You're dividing by tiny, tiny numbers, like what's one over a million? It's one, uh, one over a millionth. It's a million. What's one over a trillionth? It's a trillion. So I'm getting huge numbers here. So this limit is DNE. It's running beyond any finite value. And which kind of DNE? The infinity kind. How about the limit from the right? That's also uh, the y values are running away to infinity. So we'd say d and e and again the infinity kind. Later uh, in the chapter we'll actually then use this to say that the limit without the minus or plus is still d and e but the infinity kind. So 
that's not going to be too controversial, but what if I had just 1 over x? Then that has this behavior. What's the limit as x goes to 0 minus? It's again d and e the minus infinity kind. How about x goes to 0 plus is d and e the positive infinity kind? Can we say d and e equals d and e? Uh, so this limit exists. Uh, nope, d and e is not necessarily equal to d and e. Here's two different kinds of it. And so overall, the limit doesn't exist. Um, if we wanted to get really interesting, we could say, let's say I've got a sine wave that's going faster and faster, infinitely fast on one side. And then on the other side, something's climbing to infinity. So we'd say the limit as x goes to, let's say this is 0, to 0 minus d and e because of oscillating without settling down. And the limit as x goes to 0 plus is d and e the infinity kind. And that's a clear case where d and e and d and e are just not the, at all equal. So we can't say, oh, well, the two, uh, the limit from the left and the limit from the right are equal. So the overall, the limit exists. That's just not going to fly.